guys and welcome to Feywood. So I've been talking for a while about the fact that I wanted to get a wig and uh, DIY it basically and make it very whimsical and fairy-like and a bit of, a bit sort of gravity defying as well. Uh, now I bought the wig without much knowledge of how I was going to do this which I mean typical of me really. Um, <laughs> so I went and bought this wig here just a, a Fairly cheap one off eBay, nice and long though. I wanted a lot of um, hair to play with basically. It's got a little bit of a fringe at the front and I don't know whether I'll keep that or not. And I figured I wanted to dye it a little bit because it was a little bit brighter blue that I wanted and I wanted some more dimension in the wig as well. So I have done a little bit of research on how I do it. I did originally buy this thinking, oh yeah, this will be great. I'll just buy some hair dye and dye the wig. And then thought, oh, hang on a minute. This is a synthetic wig. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so synthetic wig will not dye with hair dye. Luckily, I did look into that before I tried it because this would have just washed right out. Now there's apparently a bunch of different ways you can dye a synthetic wig and I'm going to try a way with um, some ink. Now I've seen this method done on YouTube before so I'll try and link that video. I also have seen people use um, fabric dye but it has to be for synthetic materials um, and then anything else that's going to be like a permanent ink type situation you could use. So if you did want to play around with permanent markers on it, you could. Uh, I've seen that done either directly with the pen or removing the ink from the pen. Um, that can get a bit messy, so I don't really want to play around with that personally. But, you know, if you did want to do some, you know, spot dyeing or something like that, then you could definitely get like a Sharpie or um, another permanent marker. It doesn't have to be Sharpie. Honestly, any permanent marker is going to be fine and, and actually draw into it. Um, that I did see someone do that uh, painstakingly doing all of the roots. Um, I've also seen people do like an ombre type thing with the hair and I'm going to try to do a bit of an ombre thing if I can. Um, I've got a number of colours of inks. I have some other colours of ink too. I bought a, a, a bunch at the same time for other projects but I've got a, a dark blue, a black because I figured that could be good to get, darken up the roots a little bit and then this one I thought could be kind of fun. I don't know how this is going to work out but it's a silver so that could be interesting to make it um, very whimsical and shimmery and shiny and things. So I'm going to play with those. Now, in uh, addition to playing around with the colouring of the hair, I also want to play around with the styling of the hair. So I've seen people with wigs that um, they're almost like a beehive, but I'm trying not to go to, um, you know, French uh, beehive uh, Marie Antoinette with it. And, but have have that kind of out over the top shape but I want it I mean think about uh the shape I guess I hate to use this example but the troll hair troll doll hair that you know goes up into this like sort of point but I want it to have some maybe some curls in it maybe some flowers in it but just to look very um unnatural I guess and you know, gravity defying and swirled up in some manner out from the head. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I've got um, some Eva foam. I figured what I might do because, um, and I don't know if this is going to work. This is right at the start. As these things go, you guys will see by now whether this worked. Um, <laughs> oh, hope so. Um, I've got some Eva, Eva foam and some uh, contact cement, cement as well. What I figured was people often use um, a hair donut, donut to shape their hair and you know that adds as a base to work the hair around. And I figured the same may work for what I want to do with this wig. Whether this 
is a quality enough wig for me to really play around with it I don't know because the thing is I mean I think that can make or break so we'll see how that goes because like you know I am thinking is it thick enough am I going to start seeing the wig cap underneath I might need to be careful about where I style the hair to make sure that that's not showing um, and yes but I figure if I put the um, I'll have to dye it first and then if I put the shape that I want inside it and then style the hair around that to make sure that it's covered I'll probably paint the foam as well so that if some peeks through you're not going to see it too much so anyway that's my concept um, let's get started now I mixed this ink with the methylated spirits sort of like rubbing alcohol but they add something else to methylated spirits to give it a bad smell I think it's so people won't drink it to be honest um, and then added the dye so I did about a 50 50 ratio uh, I would imagine that you just adjust that depending on how strong you want the color to be but I just wanted to make sure I had enough ink to do this it seemed okay I'd say um, I didn't get as much color as I hoped out of it so I kept adding ink I did also try the silver it didn't really work out it gave a bit of an iridescence but it wasn't worth doing so I've washed out the dye from the wig I'm not totally happy with it though it has gone a little bit darker at the roots but not as much as I wanted and it is a little patchy I'm going to try something else instead and I picked up this dye that's for polyester and nylon fabric so specifically should work for um, like synthetic materials like this so what I'm gonna do is give this a try now the thing is I do want to do a bit of an ombre I don't want the whole thing to be this color which makes it a little tricky so I'm going to try filling this up and sort of dyeing half of the wig so that the bottom of it is still the brighter blue and hopefully that'll work out. I'm going to boil some water. This does say you should boil your wig for a while for it to take so I don't know how this is going to go, go but I'm hoping that if I have boiled water and let it soak for a while that I'll get enough colour that I'll be happy with that. I think the dyes would work on a lighter wig because I can see some colour that has come through uh, but I'm not sure that they would work as well. I have a feeling that this synthetic dye is going to work a lot better so let's see if that's true. Pretty sure I didn't need the whole packet of this ink but I found it pretty hard to uh, only pour half of it in because the packet doesn't close up again and then it has this medium that you um, put in there as well to help it adhere so I ended up just putting the whole thing in all right so this has been sitting here for about half an hour hopefully that's enough I'm going to try and rinse it out now and hopefully it's more of the color that I want this is the wig I'm pretty happy with how that's come out it does look subtle on camera but it has really deepened up that top part and it makes a huge difference because it just gives it that um, 
I don't know, that shading makes a real difference to make it look like a more quality wig, I think, than having it all one colour. And the blue, while I love the vibrancy at the base, I just wanted it to be a bit darker and not so fluoro blue. Uh, so, But I don't mind it having those bright blue ends. So I really love the way that's come out. I definitely prefer using the synthetic dye than using ink. Um, the ink, it makes it crunchy and it comes off, because it's acrylic, it comes off in chunks because acrylic dries hard. Um, like, you know, when you're using acrylic on something, um, the beauty of acrylic on paper is that it dries right down. But on something like this, it dries hard you know it leaves a hard as, as you would imagine if you put paint on this regular acrylic paint it would feel hard the ink while it's not as hard it, it still does do that um, and the color didn't really it didn't really show up as much as I hoped it would whereas synthetic dye is made for dyeing synthetic things so it's really purpose-built for for this Unfortunately, those little packets, though, uh, it's pretty hard to, like, just, you know, reuse it over and over. I was going to save some for another dye job, but it was such a, um awkward-shaped little pack that I ended up deciding to just use the whole lot on this. Um, and, you know, it's a bit wasteful, I suppose, but... Um, I might look into, if I have to do this again, getting something that's more of a bottle or something where I can, you know, use how much I need and keep the rest for other things. Um, I did give it a good rinse out, but I'm already getting a little bit of transfer in my hands. But uh, I might just live with that while I do this part because although um, the latex gloves are okay for working on things, I do have this tendency to prefer working directly with my hands if I can so I might just live with the fact that I'm going to have discolored hands but you could definitely keep your gloves on while you're doing this. The next part of this is going to be trying to manipulate this wig in an interesting way um, so what I'm hoping to create is some sort of little cone shape I think maybe even do a little twirl at the end I'm not sure how I'll do it yet um, we'll see how it comes out but I do have some Eva foam down here uh, hard to get in camera but big sheet of Eva foam I have some contact cement I have a heat gun and things like that to help manipulate it into shape and uh, you can also use um, apparently like a wood burner which I have now so what I, I may end up doing if I want to add um, like just shape some of it at the end I might use a bit of that as well so anyway let's get going on this next part it was pretty hard to cut through this foam it was a centimeter thick foam uh, which I am glad that I got because I was able to do some interesting things with it but it was yeah really tough to cut with both the scissors and the knife I have invested in foam wire cutter now uh, which hopefully I can use next time I use foam and the wood burner helped a little bit because it did have an attachment with a knife and so I did use that. I found actually just running the barrel of the wood burner across the edge that I'd cut smoothed it out a little bit so that worked a tiny bit. Now this is contact cement and uh, I know some people use barge which is also contact cement. We didn't have that here. I just went to Bunnings and found the only contact cement they had and it seemed to work okay although you can see I had to reapply some bits that end of this cone it, it just did not want to stick now I decided to put a little bit of the um, tubing with wire in it at the end mainly because I wanted this really cool kind of curve at the end and I didn't know how to really produce that with the foam I'm still new to all of that ma material and how to create the shapes I want and I figured sticking this in the end would help me 
give a little bit of a cool little curl at the end. And then it's back to the um, wood burner as well. So it had a really cool attachment that had these grooves in it that gave almost like a hair-like appearance. And I really did try to do swirls and things in different depths um, to look like hair because if you see any of this through the hair, then it won't matter as much. Now, if you guys have watched my hauls, you've probably seen me haul this. It was for my birthday. Um, it was some metallic paint that I got that's art alchemy paint. I decided to use hot glue to tack this on and then style everything around that. It was a little bit tricky with the hot glue because it wants to run. So there was a little bit of mess there, but uh, I did my best. Now I am not great with hair. I will say that now. So I am sure some of you out there who are quite handy with hair could do some pretty interesting things with these techniques that I couldn't do. <laughs> what I did try to do, but uh, mostly was just anchoring the hair at that top part where I've got the little um, you know wire part curled around it gave me just something to wrap the hair around and you can see I'm using different hair products as well to help keep everything in place I had uh, gel, I had hairspray, I basically tried a bit of everything on this just to give it some really good hold. Now this is a cheap wig and it did have a lot of hair so I was really glad that I made an insert that was um, not so visible because it didn't have a lot of thick you know fullness that was going to cover all of that up um, in the end it did I did manage to get it fairly covered which is good but the color and the um, design on it really helped if it was something that uh, was a different color or even if I didn't put all the, those um, grooves and things into it. I think you might notice it underneath the hair. Now at this point I was just slathering on all sorts of things just trying to make sure that this all stayed put because I really just want it to stay exactly where it is. I used a bobby pin just to keep that wig in place while I styled it too because um, it's a foam head and that was really helpful. I actually tacked it onto the glass with a bit of hot glue as well because it kept um, moving around and I wasn't sure what to do. So I recommend doing that if you have the option. Or getting a bust that's heavy, that would be another way to do it. Um, now you see I've put all sorts of glittery hair spray on it too, which I love. And then I wanted to do a test fit to see if it actually fit. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Now for some strategically placed flowers. So this was not just for aesthetics, um, it was also to hold the curls and things in place. So when I put these on, I was thinking about where I want a bit more strength and uh, where I want to try and use that glue to hold the curls. So that helped give it some extra strength so I was able to take the bobby pins out without any worry. I also did coat this in quite a number of layers of hairspray afterwards. <laughs> and there you have it. It did show a little bit of my hair underneath, so I had to use a bit of blue hairspray, which kind of got all over my neck. But I really love this. It was so much fun. I would do this again in a heartbeat. I thought it was great. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you give it a try. Hit subscribe if you want to see more craziness from me. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye, guys.